to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you live from beautiful Budapest here in Central Europe. I hope everybody has had a safe, safe, happy and healthy weekend. In this class, we are looking at speaking part two, giving clear answers to uh, the cue card question. Uh, while we wait for a few more of your classmates to join in, this class is presented to you by aehelp.com. That's academicenglishhelp.com. Check us out there for help with the academic version of the IELTS. Hi, Tito. Hi, Preeti. Nice to see our members in the class. Hi, Kamola. John Don Shahi. Good to see some other students as well. Uh, students, if you're learning for the general version of the exam, check us out at g-i-e-l-t-s-help.com. That's for general IELTS. On both of our websites, we have loads and loads of materials for you. Hi, Vatsal. Hi, Wei Du. Hi, Bumi. Nice to see more members. Uh, students, our websites, they look like this. This is the uh, academic website here. You can click that big red button to join the premium package. This is the general version of the website with the green background and you can click that big red button to join the premium package. After you do that, you will have a uh, My Student account right there and uh, in your My Student account, you will find loads and loads of uh, helpful materials including uh, interactive practice tests, a full online course, six original exams, over 100 hours of video lessons, uh, audio CDs, and lots of additional services. So just so you get an idea, here are the list of uh, videos. I know it's a bit bright, but there's lots and lots of videos for you to learn from. So check out those uh, websites for sure. Hi, Eugene. Great emojis. I'm feeling good. Thank you. Hope you're doing well also. If you have questions, students, about the IELTS exam, uh, please uh, send me an email to adrian, A-D-R-I-A-N, at aehelp.com. And uh, if you want to buy our books from Amazon, you can do that. Search for A Helps Academic IELTS or G Helps General IELTS. And March 18th, which is today, uh, for the next four days, we will have lots of live classes. Today, speaking part two, of course, everybody is welcome to join this uh, chat. And uh, then uh, tomorrow, we will have task two for members and listening for everyone. Then on Friday, we'll finish that task two with the members and do listening parts three and four with everyone. And then on Saturday, we'll do a speaking part one and a uh, reading lesson. So that's our schedule. You can always check the schedule on our YouTube uh, community bulletin as well. All right, students, uh, without further ado, let's get into today's part two speaking. So for those of you who are not familiar with the format of the IELTS speaking, it's a face-to-face -face interview, usually with a native English speaker often with a British English speaker. And the interview takes about 12, maybe 15 minutes maximum. Uh, it has three parts. Uh, the first part will be just some kind of general questions, some questions to get to know you better. And then part two, the examiner will give you a cue card. On that cue card, you'll see about five to six questions. And then the examiner will say, okay, you have uh, one minute to look at the questions on the card. Then you will have two minutes to speak. Here's some note paper. Here is a pencil. You can take notes in the one minute preparation time if you wish. Are you ready to start? Yes, certainly. You turn over the card and this is what you see. And now students, this is a speaking class, so let's speak. Okay, writing is good in the chat, but make sure to speak and speak nice and loud as well, okay? Uh, yeah, Kyber, it does seem like uh, the, uh, the IELTS exams are being canceled in many parts of the world because of the, uh, the coronavirus, of course, 
or delayed, if you will. But students, uh, this is a really good time to uh, study extra hard. So you basically have some extra time right now to catch up on your IELTS studies. So I highly recommend doing that um, while you're waiting for your IELTS exams. Okay, so um, don't, uh, Shivani, don't try to predict the cue card. There's no point. It can be so many different questions or topics. Never worry about um, trying to predict a cue card. That's not a good way to think about it. Okay. Uh, what's the first step? So here we have our cue card. Uh, we turn this over. What do I do first? So what should I do with my cue card? Anybody remember from previous classes what I've recommended as uh, the first step? Okay. So what is your step number one? Okay, Kyber says maybe identify what we're talking about. It's an object. Mina says what's the topic? Derek says make some notes. Um, I like Boomi Chutbar's answer the best. Uh, Boomi Chutbar says read the card twice, read the topic twice especially. Okay, all right. So again, students, I, I do realize that many of your exams have been uh, not necessarily canceled, but rescheduled. They will be uh, presented in the future. So don't worry about that so much. Uh, nobody's flying anywhere or moving around right now anyway. So stay home and study. Okay, it's a good chance to study. All right. Um, so uh, as Bumi said, step number one is uh, read the cue card carefully and read the topic statement twice, okay? Uh, this way you won't go off topic. So let's do that now, read with me. Here we go. Uh, part two, talk about an item that you plan to buy in the future. One more time, so twice. Talk about an item that you plan to buy in the future. What is it? Where do you plan to buy it? What do you need to do in order to buy this object? Why have you decided to purchase this item? What are the alternatives if you do not purchase this item? You will have one to two minutes to talk about this topic. All right, uh, looking good. So we've read this twice uh, and uh, we've identified uh, what we're doing with it. So, now step two, and a few of you said this for step one. Please, students, don't forget step one. Read that topic sentence twice. Uh, after I read the topic sentence twice, uh, talk about an item that you plan to buy in the future, uh, you should realize that you're going to use some future tense in this response, right? Boomi is on par. So step two, Identify the category that you are discussing and its key elements. So what that means, students, is in uh, the cue card, you're either going to talk about a person, place, event, idea, or an object. Okay. Now, in this case, you're clearly talking about an object. All right, because it's talk about an item you plan to buy in the future. So clearly you're discussing, you're talking about an object, okay? Make sure to practice with all of these. Roshni, good job, you're on it. You're like, yeah, it's an object. Um, when we talk about objects, regardless of the questions on the cue card, when we talk about objects, what kind of information should we include? Okay, so Mina says we should include its origin, yeah, where it comes from, sure. Um, before we get to function, uh, Mina, uh, we should talk about its appearance. That's right, Kyber. So appearance. So appearance, what it looks like. Origin, function and its value for you, okay? Those are the, 
the key elements. So here we know we're talking about an object, its appearance, origin, function, and its value for you. Okay, good. So far we're doing great. Uh, what's my next step? Okay. Elena, its longevity would be a part of its, uh, uh, its um, appearance or function. Okay. So appearance, origin, function, how it works, and its value for you. That's what you need to think of. What's the next step? What do I do after this? So I've read the card, read the topic sentence, identified. Okay, Mina says, think of two to three ideas. Yeah, and Mina, what should I be careful about when I'm thinking of these two to three possible answers? Okay, Tito says, visualize. Tito, absolutely, you're correct. We always want to picture, visualize, yeah. So step three is think of two to three objects that you can use for your answer. Make sure these are original and easy to talk about. So that's what you're focusing on, right? You want to make sure that they're original and you want to make sure that they are easy to talk about. So you're not going to uh, talk about an object that's impossible, even if you're a native speaker, to talk clearly about, right? So uh, right away, we realize that uh, phone or a mobile phone is not a good answer. Okay, a lot of students probably talking about the next mobile phone that they plan to buy. A uh, computer or laptop, probably not the best answer either. Car, meh, maybe not so good as well. Probably lots of students are going to talk about cars that they plan to buy. So let's get some other ideas out there. Okay, um, what are some other good ideas of objects that you plan to buy? Okay, now remember, you have to talk for two minutes on these. Okay. Chabda, I'm sorry to hear that you didn't succeed in your goals. Just keep studying. Okay. All right. Um, Elena says dishwasher. Yeah, dishwasher is probably a good idea. I like that idea, Elena. It's nice. Um, what else? Marina's in here as well. Hi, Marina. A gold watch by Umid John. Okay, gold watch maybe. Gold, uh, let's be specific, wristwatch. Okay. Uh, for Dobbs, a ticket? No. Okay. Uh, stay away from some uh, object that leads to an event. So don't talk about a ticket. Okay, because when you're buying a ticket for Dobbs, you're not really buying an object. You're buying a service. You're buying um, some kind of an event or entry to an event. You have to stay away from that. Okay. Roshni says, planning to buy a chimney. Okay, that could be interesting. Sure. A new chimney? Yeah, why not? It's an object of utility. Ash says, some speakers. Okay. Sure. Let's see what other... Uh, Arjun says an electric scooter. I like that idea. Yeah, see, when you think about it, you can come up with quite a few uh, original ideas. Okay. Uh, piano, somebody said. Now, I see that some of you are writing car, but on purpose, I'm staying away from car and bicycle because those are probably popular topics that many... Uh, students will pick and it's good to be original so try to think of a topic that other students aren't picking as much okay uh, IELTS examiners don't compare students in their ability but it's difficult not to when 20 students are talking about the same object okay if 20 students are talking about a car or 20 students are talking about their next iPhone, it's really difficult for the examiner not to compare you to the performance of other students. Okay, so try to stay away from really popular topics. All right, somebody said a coffee maker. 
All right, um, we have some pretty good ideas here. Uh, there's another one I like. It's good. Uh, pick a pillow, toothbrush, okay, pillow, or electric toothbrush. I like that one too. These are all great ideas. So if I were the IELTS examiner, if I'm your IELTS examiner, I would love to hear uh, dishwasher, electric toothbrush, uh, speakers, electric scooter, coffee maker. Uh, those would be fantastic for me to hear. If I heard those topics come out, I'd be like, okay, this should be interesting. All right. So if your examiner is thinking that way, though, okay, this should be interesting, then you've chosen a good topic. Okay. All right. Uh, again, noob, gun, difficult to talk about, perhaps. Um, Kush, bike, uh, too popular. Z Jafari, horse is a, not an object, it's an animal. Okay, John Dunn, again, pet is an animal. Careful, students, if you start talking about an animal, you're going to get a bad score because the ex immediately the examiner will say, okay, I guess this student didn't realize they're supposed to talk about an object, and technically, we don't consider animals like pets and horses objects. Okay, all right, um, students, let's uh, choose one of these uh, together. So dishwasher, number one, gold wristwatch, two, chimney, three, speakers, four, electric scooter, five, piano, six, coffee maker, seven, pillow, eight, electric toothbrush, nine. Let's take a vote. The one that I see is the most popular. Uh, we'll use that for today's answer. So go ahead, students, uh, vote uh, just once for one of these objects, okay? Just once for one of these objects. I see Ferdov says six, Roshni says three, one. Kim says pillow two, nine, nine. Okay, nine's getting quite a few votes here. Six seems to be popular. One seems to be popular. All right. Wow, so many people like the concept of the piano. Interesting. I wonder why. Um, I, piano wouldn't be my top choice. Okay. All right. So, uh, again, just one vote students, lots and lots of votes. Good. Um, we'll go with electric toothbrush number nine. I think that's a great choice by the way. I think if it's between piano and electric toothbrush, I would definitely go with electric toothbrush instead of piano. Uh, just because piano, you might get into a difficult situation where you need more vocabulary and grammar to express yourself, okay? I think with an electric toothbrush, it's fairly easy to um, talk about it, okay? All right, hopefully you're familiar with the words teeth and tooth and cleaning, and then you'll do okay. So let's pick electric toothbrush for today's lesson and talk about it. So our choice is electric toothbrush. All right, now our next step, step number four, is to write down usable notes. Okay. So, um, news, usable notes, that means that you, in your one minute, you need to take notes that will help you to continue speaking fluently and will give you details so that you use more lexical resource and create complex grammar, okay? So don't write down notes that you have in your head anyway, okay? So usable notes uh, means helps with fluency, and to give details, okay? So give me some uh, usable notes, okay? So Boomi says it's about, eh, I'd say 20 centimeters long, so 20, 25 centimeters long, okay? Um, black color, sure. Somebody wrote dentist recommended. Okay. 
Um, for Dob says made in the U.S. Sure, U.S. made. Uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the names of them. Oral B. Roshni says sure. All right. Uh, for Dob says a hundred dollars. Good. Yeah, again, you're building fluency. You're writing these down quickly. Okay, 365 milliampere battery. I would say it's probably more than that. Um, battery. Okay. Durable. All right, teach you some new vocabulary here. Reduce cavities. Okay, cavity is tooth decay, when you get a hole in your tooth. Okay, that's what I mean, that it can be difficult to talk about some of these points, so be careful. Uh, sensitive teeth. Okay, and when you're writing your notes, students, don't forget about the questions, right? What is it? Where do you plan to buy it? What do you need to do in order to uh, buy this object? Why have you decided to purchase this item? What are the alternatives if you do not purchase this item? So keep those thoughts in mind, okay, when you're writing down your notes. So uh, what, are your, um, what are your alternatives? Kartika, I like that uh, note, by the way, the sweet tooth. I have sweet tooth. So you need to brush more because you're eating more sugar, right? There's definitely uh, lots there. Saves time. Okay, lots of good notes. What are your alternatives if you don't buy this? Hmm? What can you do? Yeah, use a manual toothbrush, right? Okay. All right. So uh, good. Now your next step, students, step number five is uh, absolutely to think of your first sentence before, before your one minute preparation time is up. Okay. So uh, many students make that big mistake where they don't have a good first sentence. You need to have a good first sentence. Uh, have a good first sentence. Have a good first sentence ready to go. Um, that means it has to be direct and detailed. Also, you should reflect the target grammar of the cue card. In this case, that's future participle will. Okay, so this question is asking, talk about an item that you will or that you plan to buy in the future. So you need to use will, okay? So get your first sentence ready. Let's see who comes up with the best first sentence for this cue card response. Okay. Umi Dijon, none of those are good. I don't want to hear what you're going to talk about or what you decided to talk about. I just want to hear <laughs> the answer. So students, don't use words like I will talk about or I'd like to talk about. Every other student does that and it's not good. Your band score goes down. Okay. Um, for Dov says, an object that I'm planning to purchase in the near future is an electric toothbrush. Okay, sure. Okay, that's okay. Let's see what other ones students come up with. 
Mina says, so the item that I would like to talk about and is electric to students stop writing <laughs> the item that I'd like to talk about. It's really weird. Okay. Just think about that for a second. So if I'm talking to you and I say, well, I would like to talk about an electric toothbrush. I'm already talking about it. I'm going to talk about it anyway. It's not like the examiner can say, oh, nope, stop. I don't want to hear about that item. I'm out of here. Okay. So if you're saying I would like to talk about, then it's kind of like, well, what if I don't want to hear it? Do I have the option to walk away? No, because it's an IELTS exam. I'm going to sit here for two minutes and mark you. It doesn't matter what you want to talk about. You can talk about anything as long as you don't offend me. So don't tell me that you would like to talk about something. Don't tell me that there are lots of different things you can talk about. Just talk about it. Okay. Your band score will go up. The more direct detailed you are, the more clearly coherently you answer the question, the better your mark will be. Okay. Believe me, the examiners, they try to keep a cool face usually, but when the same sentence comes from the 20th student that day that I would like to talk about the examiner inside their head is going, Oh geez, really? Another student would really like to talk about something again. So don't do that. Okay. Just get right into it. Let's see some other ones. Um, Preeti says an object that I'm planning to buy in the future is an electric electric toothbrush. Yeah, that's a good start. Okay. You can be even more specific. I'm looking for some more specific answers, but she says an object, which I plan to buy in the future is an electric toothbrush. Okay. So using which or that for the adjective clause, Pavan says an object which pops to mind is electric toothbrush as it was suggested by my dentist. Pavan, that's nice. It's natural. It's original. Okay. And it's direct. That's a much better answer. An object which pops to my mind is electric toothbrush as this was suggested by my dentist. John says I will, uh, or I want to buy an electric toothbrush because it's a new item instead of using my old toothbrush. Sure. That's good too. Okay. Um, how about being super direct and saying something like, I will buy an electric toothbrush uh, next week when I get a bit of time to shop around. Okay, so get right into that future participle. I will buy an electric toothbrush next week when I get a bit of time to shop around. I've been planning to buy this uh, bathroom accessory uh, for a while now. I just haven't gotten around to it. Okay. So again, students, nice, natural language, speak, 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 and repeat. Please repeat me when you hear me say these sentences. One more time. Uh, I will buy an electric toothbrush next week when I get a bit of time to shop around. I've been planning to buy this bathroom accessory for a while now. I just haven't gotten around to it. Okay. Uh, notice how in this sentence I'm using will. Right away, I'm showing the examiner that it's clear for me on the cue card that I'm talking about a future event, an object. Okay. And uh, also here, because I'm giving a clear, direct answer, immediately I'm using a condition, conditional of real uh, event. So my band score is going up because I'm showing the examiner that I can use subordinating conjunctions meaning creating complex sentence structures, and I can use a real condition, right? So again, I will buy an electric toothbrush next week when I get a bit of time to shop around. I've been planning to buy this bathroom accessory for a while now. I just haven't gotten around to it. Okay. So far, so good. Um, students, what's my next step? Okay. What do I do now? So give me my next sentence. So the examiner at this point 
has said, your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. So I begin speaking and this is what I say, okay? So I'm speaking, speaking, speaking. What do I say next? What would be a good next sentence? I've researched a couple of brands, Sweet Creatures says, yeah, okay. I've researched a few different brands and I've decided to purchase a Let's use our notes, yeah? Pachu says, yeah, look at your notes. You talked about the appearance there. Um, so uh, US made Oral-B toothbrush, right? So let's use that. So, and I've decided to purchase an Oral-B uh, Pro 2000. That's actually my toothbrush. Ladies and gents, if you're wondering what I use to brush my teeth, I use the Oral-B Pro 2000. That's why I know it, okay? So, and I've decided to purchase, it's a good toothbrush. Uh, although I do like the one I have in Canada more, which is a, a Philips Sonic toothbrush. And I've decided to purchase an Oral-B 2000, okay. Um, Bruno R. Silva says, according to my dentist, there are a variety of brushes. Uh, in my case, uh, he recommended this brush specifically, right? Okay, so I'm going to take what you wrote there, uh, Bruno, and uh, use it. I think that's great. It's nice fluency. We wrote about our dentist, right? So according to my dentist, this is one of the better electric tooth brush brushes on the market. And it's great value for money. It costs around a hundred dollars. Sure. Looking nice. Okay. We have some uh, more suggestions for Dov says, before making the decision which brand I would like to buy, I talked with my dentist and he gave me the advice to purchase an Oral-B Pro. Very good for Dov. So I like that we're on the same page, okay? Uh, again, expressing yourselves. Good job, students. Good jobs. All right. Marco says Butler Gum 211. Manual toothbrush is better. Trust me, I'm a dentist. Um, eh, we'll get into the debate next time, but uh, all right. Uh, Khalil says it was quite, is quite expensive. Uh, Khalil, Rahman, be really, really careful, okay? So you can't jump to the past tense. So Khalil says it was quite expensive, but it, when it comes to my health, it doesn't make a difference. Uh, Khalil, be really careful here, students. Um, the uh, question is talk about an item that you plan to buy in the future. So what you want to do is you want to echo this, okay? Echo this understanding. Uh, what I mean, okay, by echo the understanding of this topic sentence is that you have to make sure not to say this was an expensive toothbrush because now you just confused your listener. Your listener is thinking this is something you plan to buy in the future. So throughout your speaking, okay, every couple sentences, you should use some grammar and some vocabulary that shows you're planning to buy this in the future. Also, the question is asking about you. So you have to keep using I, me, my, okay? If you suddenly change to you, like this brush will help you to uh, have cleaner teeth, you're confusing your listener. Or if you say people like this toothbrush because, you're confusing your listener. You have to change that to I, me, my. I use this toothbrush or I plan to have this toothbrush so that I will have cleaner teeth, okay? 
uh, and not people, not you. So be really, really careful. It's easy to make that mistake and then it gets confusing. Okay. You're very welcome, Khalil. So careful with that. All right. So, uh, so far, so good. Again, let's read, repeat, and then we'll keep going. So uh, let me erase uh, my work here so you can see the board. Repeat. I will buy an electric toothbrush next week when I get a bit of time to shop around. I've been planning to buy this bathroom accessory for a while now. I just haven't gotten around to it. I've researched a few different brands and I've decided to purchase an Oral-B 2000. According to my dentist, this is one of the better electric toothbrushes on the market and it's great value for money. It costs around $100. Okay, let's describe what it looks like. It's about 20 centimeters in height. has a rubber handle and an interchangeable brush head. Its color is either white, black, or blue. I haven't yet decided which color to buy. Okay. Now, um, this sentence here, again, I'm saying this. So this one here, this last one, I haven't yet decided which color to buy so that I keep showing the examiner that it's an item which I plan to buy in the future. Okay. All right. Um, so, I've directly answered the topic question. I'm describing what it is, what it looks like, so the appearance. Okay. Now, what should I do next? What should I type here or in the real situation? What should I say next? Okay. Boomi says this not only comes with a 2,000 milliamper battery, but also a two-year warranty. Um, Gil says, uh, in the meantime, I'll sleep and on it and make that decision later. That's good. And like your nice use of idiomatic language. Okay. Ashish, you're going off topic. Benny Wall. Uh, Preeti, it's okay to speak short and long. What's most important is that it's clear and correct. Okay. Pachu, talking about the appearance of the toothbrush as beautiful, as awkward language. Careful about that. Charlie Sen says it's about 20 centimeters long and black in color. It has a replaceable brush head, um, firewire system to charge the 2000 milliampere battery. Okay, Charlie, that's great description. Elena says it's around 15 centimeters long with a comfortable rubber handle. I find it comes in five different colors. I would like to buy the blue toothbrushes. This is my favorite color, but this will depend on its availability. Elena, that's good description too. Okay. I like it. Let's see what else some people are writing. What would you follow with? Sweet Creature says it's sensitive bristles aren't uh, tough on teeth and gums. Gums is the upper part. Gums. Okay, which is exactly what I'm looking for. All right, sweet creature. That's good too. I like it. Um, don't talk. Yeah, Roshni. There you go. So Roshni says, guys, girls, let's not forget about function. So talking about its function. So these days I'm really into parties. So my intake of chocolates and variety of sweets is more that's why i decided to take this brush which will help me remove and protect my teeth from tooth decay yeah absolutely so it's function all right so that's what we want to do um since i have quite the sweet tooth 
I need to protect my teeth from cavities and as such an electric toothbrush is the right way to go. The this oral bees uh, bees revolving bristles at two thousand RPM and two minute brush timer will ensure that my pearly whites are kept clean every day. All right, students, so I'm teaching you some new language here, having a little bit of fun with it as well. Uh, follow with me, okay? So, uh, since I have quite the sweet tooth, uh, sweet tooth is an idiomatic expression, meaning that you like chocolates, candies, sugary snacks, okay? So that's what having a sweet tooth means. It means you like those sugary sweets. I need to protect my teeth from cavities, okay? Again, cavities are those holes that you get in your teeth from bacteria attacking uh, the injured enamel. All right, and as such, an electric toothbrush is the right way to go. Right way to go means the right decision. Okay, right way to go, right decision. This oral bees revolving, revolving is a nice verb to use here. Revolving means it shifts around like this. Okay, so revolving. Um, of course, the even more um, accurate word that you can add here as well is oscillating. Okay, oscillating is a special type of movement uh, where it moves back and forth like this. So the oral bees revolving and oscillating bristles. Bristles are the little hairs that you find on your uh, hairbrush or your toothbrush. Okay, those are little bristles at 2000 RPM. RPM is rotations per minute. For those of you who like cars and motorbikes, you're probably familiar with this acronym rotations per minute, um, RPM, yeah, not RMP. Okay, and uh, two minute brush timer. So as you know, many of these toothbrushes, they have a little timer that beeps or light goes off or buzzes when you're done, will ensure that my pearly whites, there's a nice idiomatic expression for teeth, okay? We call your teeth, your pearly whites, you know pearls, the pearls on the necklace that come from the clams, right? You call your teeth your pearly whites, okay? All right, are kept clean every day. Okay, so we're doing a fantastic uh, job so far. I'm sure your examiner is impressed. Now, at this point, you want to make sure that you're answering the cue card, okay? So after, I'm gonna put this into brackets or parentheses here. After about a minute of speaking in part two, check the cue card and make sure to answer all of the questions. It's very important to get a high band score, okay? So that's what we want to do now. We look at the cue card and we're making sure that we're answering everything on the card. What is it? We're talking about it. Item we plan to buy in the future. Yep, I'm using I, me, my. I'm using will and plan, so I'm good. Where do you plan to buy it? Uh oh, I haven't answered this yet. Okay, so I want to make sure that I answer that. I don't even go to the next questions. I stop right there when I check the cue card and I go back and immediately answer that. I kind of answer that as 
I'm looking at the cue card, okay? So give me some answers, students. Jay Hong Ling, welcome to our group of members. Thank you for joining. Send me an email. I'll hook you up with your, per uh, with your uh, perks. Ferdov says, I'm going to purchase this item next Saturday, 1 p.m. when I'm at the Matreshka shopping mall. Very good, Ferdovs. Okay. Uh, Umijan says, from an online shop. Umijan, be even more specific. So say, I plan to buy this item with express delivery from Amazon. Okay. Or from eBay. The more specific you are, the better you will be. Okay. I would use a correlative conjunction here. So I will... Uh, purchase this brush either online through Amazon or at media market near my home if they are willing to price match with Amazon all right so uh, that's what I would say. I will purchase this brush either online through Amazon or at Media Market near my home if they are willing to price match with Amazon. Again, very detailed using complex, using compound grammar here, using either or, that nice correlative conjunction to get those band scores up up and away into the band eight nine category all right that's what you want to do uh team rubby raz one says my dentist will order one for me uh and i will pick it up next week but she says i'm planning to buy this brush from my local supermarket sure supermarkets maybe a little bit awkward put you electronics shop i think would be a little bit better uh, dentist ordering it is okay. Elena Mori says there's a good department store just five blocks from my home where I will buy it this coming Sunday. They have a great offer uh, with a 20% discount, right? Elena, use some of that quantitative language when possible. Okay. Uh, Preeti Yogi says last week I saw this item on Flipkart and I will purchase it very soon to protect my sweet teeth. Very good, Preeti. Okay. Yeah, Marina, I know they're available in supermarkets as well. But again, supermarket, it's not the best um, answer. An electronics shop would probably be a little bit better or a health store maybe. Okay. All right. Um, let's keep going here. Uh, so... Have I answered all of my questions on the card? No, not yet. Why have you decided to buy or purchase this item? We talked about that, so it's because I have a sweet tooth. What do you need to do in order to buy this object? Okay, we want to maybe answer that a little bit more clearly. Although we've said a bit about it, so it's there, but we can be a bit more clear. So, so I need about a hundred dollars and a couple of hours on this coming Sunday to make the purchase and I need to make up my mind about which color to choose if I don't carry through with my plans, I will be stuck brushing my teeth with my trusty hand held brush that I currently use. All right. So now I believe I've answered all of the questions on the card. Always make sure to answer all the questions on the card. What are the alternatives if you do not purchase this item? That was the last 
question, right? Okay, students, let's read this card again and read our answer. Make sure it makes sense. Let's do this together. Again, speak, repeat. Here we go. Talk about an item that you plan to buy in the future. What is it? Where do you plan to buy it? What do you need to do in order to buy this object? Why have you decided to purchase this item? What are the alternatives if you do not purchase this item? Ashish, welcome to our group of members as well. Make sure to send me an email so I can hook you up with perks. All right, here we go, students. Here's our answer. I will buy an electric toothbrush next week when I get a bit of time to shop around. I've been planning to buy this bathroom accessory for a while now. I just haven't gotten around to it. I've researched a few different brands and I've decided to purchase an Oral-B Pro 2000. According to my dentist, this is one of the better electric toothbrushes on the market and it's great value for money. It costs around $100. It's about 20 centimeters in height has a rubber handle and an interchangeable brush head. Its color is either white, black, or blue, uh, but I haven't yet decided which color to buy. Since I have quite the sweet tooth, I need to protect my teeth from cavities, and as such, an electric toothbrush is my right choice or the right way to go. This Oral-B's revolving and oscillating bristles at 2000 RPM and two minute brush timer will ensure that my pearly whites are kept clean every day. I will purchase this brush either online through Amazon or at media market near my home if they're willing to price match with Amazon. So I need about a hundred bucks and a couple of hours on this coming Sunday to make the purchase. And of course, I need to make my mind up about which color to choose. If I don't carry through with my plans, I'll be stuck brushing my teeth with my trusty handheld brush that I'm currently using. All right, so that's your band nine response. Your accent doesn't have to be perfect. Your pronunciation doesn't need to be perfect, okay? The flow, the grammar, the accuracy, the detail, responding to all the questions on the card, that has to be accurate. That's what will get you those high band nine scores, okay? So again, make sure to practice part two lots at home because it's not simple, it's not easy. We don't do this kind of speaking in everyday life, so you have to build strategy and confidence. You can do this on our websites also. We have lots of videos and materials to help you, and we even offer practice speaking interviews. Okay, so check us out at aehelp.com for academic IELTS and g-i-e-l-t-s help.com for general. That's it for today. Wonderful participation, everybody, on the topic of brushing teeth and staying healthy. Make sure to wash your hands lots. Try not to touch your face these days. Okay, stay away from that. I know it's difficult, but don't touch your face, especially if you're wearing masks. Don't touch your face. Okay, and uh, have a great rest of the day. Tomorrow, I will be back with task two for members and listening parts one and two for everyone. Bye for now. Take care of yourselves. Much love from Budapest.